right. Yeah. And that was just Dan, John. He, his break was essentially the same as when ours was. And he's, then he'll be free after five, so. I think they'll get through. Yeah. And if we can avoid having more witnesses, great. Yeah. Take my kids to Washington, D.C. for a long weekend in July. Oh, nice. Anything special or just cause? They're in the history, so I'm going to keep that fire rolling. It's really, I really like yeah, D.C. Right? When, when we lived in New York, we'd go down there. It's only like three and a half hours away from where I went to law school, which seems crazy that you go through four states, five states. Oh. and. <laughs> I really, that was one of our favorite places to visit. If you ever get a chance, it's cool. Fancy hotels. I don't need any of that. It's hot in here. Yeah, it is. This courthouse has always had the worst HVAC. Mm -hmm. it's either it's either hot, it's or, right. yeah, it's just terrible. Go up one more floor, and the mm -hmm. courtroom is about eighty, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then this morning, the heat kicked on, and it sounded like a train was coming through the window. <laughs> Seriously, I, you know, <laughs> had lots of hearings over here. Never have I heard it do that. <laughs> All right, just uh, give me a minute here, we'll be ready to go. Museum of the Bible. Of the Bible? Yeah. There's a museum for everything there. Mm. I mean, you're going to have to readmit me to the Zoom. Right. You're not in there yet. Not yet. Oh, no, I'm installing updates. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez, Bernie Seiling was charged with how many counts? 32 felony fraudulent writings. Ooh, Bernie Seiling. Who's that? He's that guy. Is who, that the guy who has all those trusts and yes, everything? Oh, okay. There has to be over 200 yeah. trusts. <laughs> I, I feel like call from Department of Justice on that. They're subpoenaed a whole slew of records from the uh, Register of Deeds in Bayfield. Mm -hmm. I think the dude's in some serious hot water because I, you know, he filed bankruptcy. Is that there's no way this guy has filed half of the required mm -hmm. tax filings necessary. So that should be an easy investigation, relatively. Yeah, I remember you called me one time and you saw my name on some yeah, deed yeah. or um, yeah, that like, I didn't know what I was doing. Just be careful. I just did it for the title company. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then I Googled him and he's like, guy, I don't know exactly what he was doing, but. Washburn County case, but Mel Mogan is on it, not um, Angie. The prosecuting attorney is Christina Ness. Christian Ness? Never heard of Christian Ness. I don't know who that is. All right, thank you.
So apparently Mr. Grady called and he's basically had the same lunch as us. So I'm hoping that we can uh, plow through this and not have to call him again. If um, if there is a need to do that, then I guess uh, we'll do what we can do to um, make that arrangement. But um, Hopefully, Mr. Pierce will be able to answer the questions that you feel we need to have answered. We can't hear you. Uh, we really can't. Sorry. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Could you admit me on Zoom, John, please? Sure. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Deputy Pierce is here, obviously. Um, Dan Grady called uh, while we're out on lunch, and apparently, um, he is. Yeah, I admit that. It is. It says it is. Okay. Oh, is it echoes? Good. Okay. okay. Um, apparently, he had the same lunch as us. So let's see if we can get through uh, Deputy Pierce and get everything uh, answered that you want um, answered. And if we need to try to locate Mr. Grady, we'll do that. But otherwise, uh, let's see if we can wrap it up with um, Deputy Pierce and then I believe your client. I got it. Okay. okay. We'll do the best we can. Okay, uh, Deputy Pierce, if you want to raise your right hand, I swear your testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, it is. Okay. Attorney Hitchcock Cross, go ahead. All right. So, uh, do you work for Ashland County? Yes, I do. Uh, what position? On. One second. Thank you. Thank you. Could you say that again, please? Yeah, do you work for Ashland County? Yes, I do. What position? Detective Sergeant. Okay. Have you spoken with anybody about your testimony here today? Uh, just my attorney. Okay. okay. Mr. Zupke? Could you say that again, please? Did you speak to Mr. Zupke about your testimony here today? No, to just um, other than if he knew what time I was going to testify. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Now... At any time, did you become aware of a sexual assault allegation made by one inmate against another inmate in the Ashland County Jail at, in 2022? Yes. Okay. How did you become aware of that allegation? I was requested by uh, Sergeant Wilbur to investigate the case after it had been passed back to the Ashland County Jail by the Ashland Police Department. Okay. Now... Um, do you, let's just go into your, what's your position with the Ashland County? Detective Sergeant. Okay. And, um, are you, do you, are there other people who could be available to investigate? I guess put it another way. Is there a reason why you would have been chosen to investigate uh, this complaint? You had asked a couple questions. Could you? What's the question? There's a couple questions. The question there. is why are do you know why you were asked to investigate this complaint? Yes. I'm uh, my uh, main cases I investigate are sexual assaults, child abuse, neglect, those types of cases. The other detective specializes in property crimes and narcotics. I understand. Okay. So uh do you have and do you know what uh PREA is? I'm familiar with it sort of not i mean i know what the acronym stands for i understand prison rape elimination act so i assume that you don't have any specialized training as a prea investigator is that right i do not okay and uh was that ever an issue when you conducted uh your investigation into the sexual assault at the jail in 2022 so it was brought up with the district attorney's office i asked them if because that was the reason I believe that the police department passed it back to the jails because they didn't have anybody that was PREA trained. And then I consulted with the DA's office and they reached out to um, somebody with the state that said, if the jail was housing state or federal inmates, then I would have to be PREA trained to do the case. But that in fact was not the case. So that's why I was able to investigate it. Okay. And when did you get that determination from somebody at the state? Uh, right around the time I was asked, I, end of November, I believe. Okay. And as far as I understand, uh, 
Mr. Wilbur, or Sergeant Wilbur, gave you this, uh, tasked you with this investigation uh, on November 29th of 2022. Is that right? That sounds correct, yes. Okay. And prior to that, you had been out on vacation for uh, the gun deer hunting season. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Do you know what day that uh, vacation started? You need a calendar? <laughs> The day before gun deer season, I took that Friday off and I was on vacation the whole week after that. Okay, so that's from the 17th to be clear. Uh, I don't know if you have that in front of you, but my count from the 29th, the whole week is to the 21st. And then that Friday is the 18th. So the gun deer hunting started on November 19th. Okay, so your last day of work there would have been on the 17th, is that right? Yes. Appreciate that clarification. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, um, when you, I yeah. So, just based on that, are you able to tell us what date uh, the DA informed you that you could do this investigation without specific pre-training? training If it's in my report, yeah, off the top of my head, no. Okay. Well, do you believe it was in November of 2022? 20, uh, I would imagine end of November, somewhere in there, yeah. That... Okay. And then after you received that information, you began the investigation or something else? I, I believe so, yes. Okay, was it immediate? They said I was assigned the investigation end of November. I had the sexual assault deputy go interview the the alleged victim. And then I went and talked to potential witnesses that next day, I believe. Who was the sexual assault deputy? Uh, Amy O'Donohue. Okay, I got it. So... When you, uh, you completed an investigation, right? Yes. When did you complete it? Uh, whenever I sent it to the DA's office in beginning, uh, beginning to the middle of January. Well, that date's pretty important, sir. Can you tell us when that happened? Do you want him to review the reports so I can get some dates? I can pull Do you that believe up? that's in the report? I believe so, yes. Okay. This is a, I'm fine with you showing it to him, please. Got a paper copy of Exhibit 14 that he has in front of him. Yeah. All right. Can I can I direct your attention to the second page here, please? Which page? Second page, number two. You recognize that document? What I have on the top is incident referral to district attorney, Ashland County Sheriff's Department. You see that? That one right there. Mm -hmm. Yes, that one right okay. there. Okay. You, you do understand the second page, right? Got yes. it. Okay. We're on the same page now? Mm -hmm. Are we on the same page now? Yes. Okay. So I, is this the document that uh, you referred uh, this incident to the district attorney? Yes, that's a referral cover sheet. Okay. What's the date that this document was sent? I don't know. Off, offhand, I don't see it on there. No, it should be on there, right? What? Not necessarily. It's, it's transmitted via email to the DA's office, so they would have a file uh, 
date and time on on that email when they receive it. Okay. So and you completed this form, right? Yes. Okay. And it says incident date on there, right? Yes. Incident time, you see that? Yes. And those are both blank, right? Yes. And it also says up in the top right, entered into computer, that's also blank. Yes. Okay. So is this help refresh your recollection of when you sent this or no? Does it help recollect when I sent when I sent it? No, it does not. Okay. <clears throat> would there be any other than the actual email that you would have sent to this uh, to the district attorney? Is there any other document that is going to show when you actually forwarded this on to the district attorney? No. No. Okay. Is there a reason this information is not included on this sheet? No. Okay. Was that a conscious decision you made or something else? No. No. Okay. Were you trained to fill out this sheet completely? I mean, we get copies of it in FTO or field training. Okay. And, and that in indicates that you're supposed to fill this out completely, right? All right, let's move on. This has nothing to do with the actual issues of the grievance. If you want to get a date, get a date. Great. Well, we don't have a date. That's what we're working on. I so I'm going to direct you to page. Was, well, until you, until you ask him a question regarding page two, he was looking for it in the report. So if you want him to finish doing that, then let's do that. So then that's why I asked him, sir, if there was any other document that would indicate what the date was. And then he answered no. So right. I, we're moving on on that basis. Thank you. So can you turn to this third page, please? Yes. And, okay. And I just want to be clear, you're identifying this entire document that is 50 pages as your report or something else. It's not all my report and all there's, obviously it says right on there, Mel Ashenbacher's report as well. Okay, so this document in front of you is a report authored by Mel Ashenbacher. Is that right? Some of it. Okay. Well, we're looking at page three. Are you looking at page three? Title page one in the Cody report or page one, two, three as we flip through it? He's on page one, two, three, three of exhibit 14. Exhibit, page three, exhibit 14. You see that there? Yes. Okay. And what's the date on this report? October 23rd. Okay. And then there's another date I see somewhere in the middle of there. It says 131, 2023, UCR clear date. You see that? In the middle of the page? Yes. What does that mean? That means when a uniform crime reporting uh, data was assigned to this incident. Okay. So it would have been assigned on the 23rd of October. And what does the clear date mean? So that's just the UCR occur date is when I believe when the report was generated, the clear date is when somebody actually assigned a UCR code to the report. What's the, what's the purpose for the, or can you account for the discrepancy? I'm not aware of any discrepancy. Well, what's the difference between the occur date and the clear date in this situation here? So the occur date is when the report was created. The clear date is when, um, so whoever does uniform crime reporting, like now we do NIBRS reporting, national incident-based reporting, which also generates, uh, UC, you have to do a UCR number as well. Whoever did the UCR number did it on January 31st. Okay. Is that the date that the suspect was arrested or something else? That's the date that the UCR number was assigned to, or to the case. I got it. Okay. And that's, I, I think we're trying to understand why that might have occurred uh, almost three months later. Because that's when the report that was active until that time. Okay. I think I got it now. All right. So I'm going to direct you to page. Uh, 
Now I see it. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, if you would direct your attention to 11. So 11 should say- Change your nine like, on the bottom. Should look like that. Additional information. Yes, he's on, yes, page, I'm on, he's on page 11 of exhibit 14. Appreciate that. Okay. And do you see your name on that document on that page? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, what does this page indicate? The so date that, that way. is this your report starting here? Yes. Okay. So the initial information says that uh, you received the support, uh, this information from Wilbur uh, on 1129 of 22, right? Yes. Okay, did you ever complete a summary of your investigative findings? I mean, other than the report itself, I guess. Not, I don't know if that's what you're asking. Okay, so this is the only document that you authored in regard to uh, this allegation. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, and is just looking at the entire 50-page document, is this the document that you authored? Yes, if it has my name on there, that's the reports that I typed. Okay, and but to put it another way, is this the entire document that you then gave to the district attorney? Yes. Okay. Did you ever complete an investigation in, because uh, this is a criminal investigation, is that right? Yes. Okay. Did you ever speak to Jan Lavasser in regard, Kim, in regards to this uh, investigation? Yes. Okay, when did that occur? I believe around the same time when I started the investigation. Okay. Did you base any of your findings based on any statement that Ms. Lavasa gave you? No. Okay. At any time, did you um, inform uh, Ms. Lavasa that she was required to answer your statements? Can you say that again, please? Did you require Ms. Lavasa to answer your statements? Did I require her to? No. No. Okay. But you had, you're uh, an officer for the department, right? Yes. Okay. So she had an extra obligation to answer your questions over and above what a civilian would have, correct? I would say that I asked her about uh, some things that I observed in the jail and asked for some clarification on them. That's when, when she uh, stopped in my office. So this conversation occurred in your office? Yes. Okay. All right. So then after uh, you got this information from uh, Mr. Wilbur, did, uh, did you review what, any investigation that had been done prior to uh, your invest prior to 1129 of 2022? Did I review any other investigations, you said? Right. I mean, at this point, I was starting my own investigation into the allegations, so I didn't have any facts, really, other than the alleged allegations um, between okay, two inmates. Okay, but there were written inmates. reports by jail uh, personnel, right? There was some other reports, yeah. I okay, and you consulted those, right? Yes. Okay. When did you consult them? I don't know if it's in my report or not. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Then, um, did you ever conduct a personnel investigation uh, into this sexual assault? No. Okay. So you never investigated any work rule violations in connection with this assault? I, like I said, I asked about some rules and I was informed by Lieutenant Levaster that they were rule and violations. And I, I forwarded those on to my then supervisor at the time would be my immediate supervisor was Chief Deputy Zupke, now Sheriff Zupke. Okay. So you gave the information uh, that the the conversation that you gave uh, that Miss Lavasser the answers that she gave to you uh, in your office 
And I, remind me, are you a sworn law enforcement officer? Yes, I am. Okay, you're certified. Uh, you're certified, right? Yes. Okay, and did you Mirandize her at any time? No. No. Okay. <clears throat> and are you aware of any work rules that would have required her to, to tell the truth? Could you say that again, please? Are you aware of any work rules at the Ashland County uh, Sheriff's Department that require its employees to tell the truth uh, in response to investigation? Not off the top of my head. I don't know of a specific rule other than, I guess, an oath you take to. What I'm okay, to so you're, there's, you're not aware of anything in the policies or procedures which require you, for example, to tell the truth. Uh, in your employment? I'm sure there's something, I don't know of a specific policy off the top of my head. Okay. And you didn't remind her of any policies when you talked to her? No. Okay. But you did give the information that you, uh, that you got from her directly to Mr. Zupke, right? So again, I didn't quite hear you. You gave the information that you got from Lieutenant Lavasser directly to Mr. Zupke, right? At some point, I, I can't remember when, but I said, I was just uh, clarifying, because I'm not super familiar with jail operations. I asked her for clarification on a couple of things I observed watching, initially starting to watch the videos. Great. When did you communicate this to Mr. Zupke? I don't, I don't recall. Okay, what was the context? What was the context? Right. Where were you at? Let's start with that. I would say it's probably towards the end of this, the whole investigation of the, of um, the allegations of the sexual okay. assault in the jail. Do you know if Ms. Lavasser is currently working at the department? Can you say that again, please. Do you know if Ms. Lavasser is currently employed by the department? Right now? Right now. Do I know if she is? Yes. Do you know if she is? As far as I, I observed the email that she was no longer employed there. Great. When did you get that knowledge? Uh, end of, middle, end of January, somewhere in there, I believe. Okay. Was this conversation you had with Mr. Sefke before or after that? before that okay and how do you know that because i had left for uh guard training for the national guard for a couple of weeks i left on january my training was january 17th through the 31st so i was gone for two weeks and i believe the email came out sometime while i was gone okay do you recall about how long uh this conversation happened before you went on your guard training I would say, I said, I brought it to the attention when I was done with my investigation that there were some potential rule violations that weren't being enforced. And that's, and I gave him the context of my conversation with Lieutenant Lavasser at the time. Okay. And that's again the conversation that you didn't inform her of, uh, you didn't uh, Mirandize it, right? Correct. Okay. One question. Were you investigating her for a crime? I was not. Was she in custody? No, she was not. Then what does Miranda have to do with any of that? Move on. So as I'm sure the tribunal knows that when uh, the government interrogates anybody, whether or not they're a suspect in custody or even applying for licenses, or especially when they're employed by the government uh, and under work rules, when the government compels speech, uh, there is, a, it is, we'll say, um, illegal and contrary to the constitution, to use that compelled speech in any way against them. That uh, also includes, uh, of course, um, 
criminal activity, but it can also apply to disciplinary activity. So that's, uh, which I'm sure you're aware of. I am aware of what Miranda applies to. That's why I, I just asked those questions. Move on. Right. So again, Miranda is just, for example, the criminal context. You, you made your record. I understand what you are saying. Let's move on. I don't think you do. Because when you're saying, and I guess I haven't made my record carefully enough, because again, uh, compelled speech by the government applies to all people and not necessarily where they're in, just in custody. There's also a great line of cases on parolees. So uh, I appreciate that, but um, I think you're not uh, understanding the uh, nuance of those protections here. But be that as it may, I can move on. <clears throat> so when you say rule violations, who determined a rule violation? Who determined those? Who identified the rule, the potential rule violation in the first place? Uh, Kim Lavasser. Okay. And what rule violations were those? It was uh, obstructing the views into the cells and going in cells you're not assigned to. Okay. And what, if anything, did she suggest at that time should be done about those rule violations? She said it was up to the correctional officers to enforce the rules. Okay. And what about the sergeant? I would imagine they fall under correctional officer as well. Yes. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so it's at that time that you learned about potential rule violations, is that right? When I talked to her? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and when did this conversation happen again? I believe the same day that I, or the day after when I started the investigation. Okay. And did you discuss whether or not, uh, I guess let's put it this way. You understood that there were several reports of sexual assault uh, or alleged sexual assault that had happened uh, prior to October, right? Yes, that's why I started my investigation from when the alleged victim became incarcerated in Asha County until he was separated from the alleged suspect. Great. So what, when was he separated from the suspect? I recall correctly, I believe October 16th. Okay. 22. And then, so he wrote this letter uh, that generated the uh, subsequent investigation on the 23rd, right? Yes, that's what, what it says on there. Okay. And then uh, based on your knowledge and understanding review of the reports, uh, the jail um, received complaints about this behavior and did they investigate? Yes. Okay. What, if anything, was the outcome of their investigation? First of all, did, was there any uh, rule violations found in their investigation? I don't know. Okay. What, if anything, uh, was the result of those investigations uh, by the jail? I believe they talked to um, the alleged victim, and he said at the times that nothing was going on, so they went about I think they watched him for a couple of days or something like that. Okay. Does that sound reasonable or something else? I guess it's not really my position to say what's reasonable for. Sure. Did you identify any rule violations in that conduct? With what conduct? The investigation and the reports on the investigation. I mean, other than inmates going in other inmate cells that none that I'm aware of at this time. Okay. But you found that out subsequently, right? Yeah. After I started my investigation. Okay. And one of the things you did in your investigation 
was watch the videotapes, right? Yes. Okay. When did you start doing that? Like it says, I, I believe the 29th or 30th of November. How many days did you spend uh, viewing these tapes? Probably a month or so. There was uh, approximately 45 days, give or take a little bit of footage to go through. So you didn't finish going through the tapes until the end of the year or in, uh, or was it later than that? Yeah, I would, I would say in the first part of January. Okay. So about a week before Ms. Lavasa got terminated, is that right? I don't know when she got terminated, but I, when I finished the footage, I went and talked to Mr. Tudor. So around that time. Okay. Okay, so the first time you talked to Mr. I, we don't need to say his name again, but uh, before you, the first time you talked to the alleged victim uh, was when? The suspect? Sure, I appreciate that clarification, yeah. If I can review my reports, I can give you a date. Absolutely, and I, maybe I can direct you. Uh, there's a series of, I think, uh, page 19, 20, here we go. I think it's uh, 2019 going on 20. If that's helpful. It does say page 17 and then actual numbers, but I realize there's a two page cover that's not included in that pagination. But so we're, again, we're talking about exhibit 15, page 19. Yes. So January 10th. January 10th. Okay. Now, and, and just from my understanding, above there, there's a series of dates in October going all the way back, I think, till August. Uh, what are those? That's my general observation of each day's events as it pertains okay. to the suspect and victim. Okay. And so was it before or after 110 of 2023? that you uh, identified any potential rule violation? Like I said, I was informed that they were rule violations right away when I talked to, to Kim. I wasn't there to investigate rule violations. I was there to investigate the alleged sexual uh, assault in the jail. Okay. So I guess we'll then go back to you're aware of uh, the Ashland County Sheriff's Office Policy and Procedure Manual, right? Yes. Okay, and you're aware of Policy 111, the Personnel Complaint Policy? I'm sure I reviewed it. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Okay. Do you recall if there's any duties that you have if you uncover a work rule violation in that policy? I, like I said, I don't recall the policy off the top of my head. Okay. Do you believe you're required to make any report at all? I would, I would say I probably am. Okay. Do you believe you're required to make a report in writing? I don't know. Okay. Do you believe you made a report in writing when you discovered, and that's sorry, we're clear that you discovered uh, potential work rule violations, right? Right. Okay. So did you make a report in writing after you discovered this potential work rule violation? I ordered this report to the chief deputy at the time via email. Okay. And you talked to him as well, right? Yes. Okay. How about, do you know who Mick Brennan is? Yes. Did you forward this report to Mick Brennan at all? I was following my chain of command and sent it to the chief deputy. I don't know where he sent it. So that's, you did not send it to Mr. Brennan, right? No. Okay. Well, you, did you get any instructions not to send it to Mr. Brennan? No. Okay. Did you talk to Mr. Brennan about your investigation at all? Yes. Okay. What was the discussions you had with him? He had came in my office once and asked what I was working on. And I told him I was working on the alleged um, jail sexual assault. Okay. Did you tell him about any potential work rule violations then? 
No. No, okay. But you could have, right? I believe, yeah. Okay. So, um, and again, all the work rule violations that we're talking about, those are work rule violations that were identified against uh, who had committed those work rule violations, if you know. Who committed them? Right. Let's say the correctional officers. Okay. And the person who alleged that they had committed them to you. Can you say that again, please? Who alleged uh, that these correctional officers had violated work rules? I, I don't know. What was it, Kim Lavasser or somebody else? She, yeah, she had informed me that the inmates were, um, you know, committing the violations and that it was up to the correctional officers to enforce those violations. Okay. Did you discuss taking any corrective action at that time? I believe I informed her after a conversation with a couple other of the inmates that it sounded like that the victim was still being bullied by some other inmates and uh, he wasn't eating or something like that. And she, she had said that she talked to the victim and he was fine. Okay. Now, do you know who Kyle Kadat is? Yes. Okay. Who is he? Uh, at the time, or as of now, he's the interim jail lieutenant. Right. He's got Kim Lavasser's job now, right? Yes. Okay. Did he participate in this investigation in any way? He uh, was present when I did some of the interviews. Why? Because we like to work together when able to interview people. Okay. So it's fair to say that he's well aware of uh, the allegations and uh, the sexual assault allegations. Is that right? Yes. When do you believe he first became aware of the sexual assault invest, uh, allegations? I believe he was present when I got asked to do the case, so probably about the same time. Okay. And th was this the first time you, when you got uh, this case uh, information from Mr. Wilbur, was this the first time you had heard about this allegation? I think there, I think Mr. Wilbur had said something sometime before that the, the Ashton Police Department was looking into it. I okay. didn't pay too much attention to it. What context did he explain that to? He said, I think it's something along the lines that we have a PREA case APD is looking into. And when did you learn that? Sometime in November, I would imagine. Okay. Was that before you went on vacation or after? I couldn't say for sure. Okay, but it didn't happen while you were on vacation, right? Right. Okay. And the day that you got back from vacation is when you got the information from Mr. Wilbur, right? Yes. Okay. So based on that, did it happen before or after? It happened before my vacation. Yes. Okay. Great. <clears throat> so um, do you indicate anywhere on this form that you had learned about this investigation anytime previous to 1129 of 2022? What form? This exhibit fifth, uh, the full investigation file, which I have forgotten the exhibit number. Exhibit 14. 14. Did you uh, indicate anywhere on exhibit 14 that you had learned of this prior to 1129 of 2022? No. Why not? Because it had nothing to do with me at the time. Okay. Did you ever, uh, let's be clear, in what, uh, whose office did Sergeant Wilbur make these comments to you? What comments are you referring to specifically? When he told you about the Ashland PD declining to investigate because of Priya. Whose office did he, he, he was in my office when he asked me to do the investigation. Okay. And uh, was Mr. Zubke there? No. Okay. How about Kyle Kadat? I believe he was. Okay. Good. So at any time between those two events, did you inform Mr. Zupke of the uh, 
of the information that you would receive. Objection to that to, or clarification between what what two That's events. Fine. And I appreciate that. I'll back up and I'm getting a little tired here, but I appreciate it. So let's just be clear that there was a um, a issue involving. Uh, so you found out that there was. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just give me one second, please. Thank you. I was out of water there. Okay. <clears throat> so um, let's just back up. There's this, uh, Ms. Sergeant Wilbur tells you that the Ashland PD declines to investigate. Um, is there anything else that's uh, arose in that conversation? Not that I can recall. Okay. How about the subject of a pre-investigator? Did that arise? All right. Can you say that again, please? The subject of doing a PREA compliant investigation, did that arise in that conversation? Say that one more time, sorry. Sure. Did Sergeant Wilbur and yourself discuss uh, PREA compliant investigations when he told you that uh, the Ashland PD declined to investigate? Like I said, he told me that investigator charge said he couldn't uh, take the case because he wasn't PREA trained. Okay. And what's your knowledge of PREA training at that time uh, with the Sheriff's Department? Very minimal. That's why I reached out to the DA's office to ask if for advice if I could investigate the case. I got it. Okay. But you understood that there wasn't any PREA trained investigators at the department at that time, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So did you ever communicate with anybody about the lack of PREA trained investigators uh, prior to 1129? No. Okay. And did you ever speak to Mr. Zupke about this uh, investigation prior to 11 29 22 no okay now i'm going to direct you to pages uh the bottom of page nine on exhibit uh 14. you see that that Amy O'Donoghue's report? That's okay. So that's, that would, you would consider that Amy O'Donoghue's report. Is that in, con in conjunction with your report or something else? Say that again, please. Sure. Is this in conjunction with your, because the date I see on here is 1129. So I'm wondering if she's doing this in conjunction with your report or what? Yes. I'm, I'm her supervisor. And I asked if she would, um, she specializes in interviewing, interviewing victims. Okay, I, I didn't get that. So, okay, she, you're, she's up in your chain of command. And then it says print date 11 12 of 2023 at the bottom. You see that? For 1 12. 1 12. Do you know why this was printed on January 12 of 2023? I don't know if that's the date that I sent it to the DA or if that's the date I sent it to. Um... Chief deputies up at the time. Okay, and didn't but you and you didn't send it to the sheriff at that time either, right? I did not. What, say that again, please. You didn't send it to the sheriff on one twelve of twenty twenty three, right? And I'll just for correcting here. I believe the sheriff Zupke was sworn in on January third, right? So it, yeah. so this would no, be. I get that. Well, well, I'll leave that for what it's worth. So here, when I see first sexual assault, second sexual assault, third sexual assault, physical assault. All those are the statements that Amy O'Donoghue gave to you. Is that true? 
those are statements that the, the alleged victim gave to her. And then she typed up a supplemental report for this case. Okay. And then I want to direct you to the next page, page 11 on 14. And it says uh, your name at the top, and then it says initial information. Do you see that? I'm sorry, I couldn't, couldn't hear you. Sure. At the top of this page 11 here, uh, your name is there, and then it says initial information. Do you see that part? Yes. Okay. So about halfway through, it said... Um, Sergeant Wilbur said that the case, this case passed back to the jail by APD as they did not have anyone that was PREA trained. Did I read that right? Yes. Okay, but actually that happened before 11-29-2022, right? I said, I think this is all on the same day. Okay, so you said it again a second time on that a day or what? Are you asking when Ashland kicked it back to the county? I'm not. This, I'm asking, Sergeant Wilbur said that this case passed back to the jail by APD as they did not have anyone that was pre-trained. And I'm asking you if that statement occurred on 11-29 or some other time. Yes. Okay. But it also occurred before that, right? That they passed it back or, no. that, that, or that statement? Sergeant Wilbur said, do you see the verb there is said? Okay, that's the action there, that this case passed back to the jail. So the verb that we're going to look at is not the passed back, but the said part. Can you focus on that? Yes. Okay. So based on your earlier testimony, you told us that Sergeant Wilbur told you that this case was passed back by the Ashland Police Department prior to you going uh, out on vacation on gun beer. Did Objection I that? to that question. It misstates the witness's prior testimony. Re-ask it. it. It doesn't make sense. The witness, and for my clarification on this, the witness previously testified he was advised by Sergeant Wilbur that they had a case referred to Ashland PD that was a sexual assault case. Not that it was sent back. Well, lucky we got a recording. So again, and I appreciate the testimony that we've got there, but did what uh, what Mr. Lindsay just testified to, is that also your testimony? Does that what? What Mr. Lindsay just said or testified to, is that what you're saying is true or something else? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> then it says, Sergeant Wilbur talked about a letter that was passed directed to be given to jail lieutenant lavasa you see that part yes okay and it said sergeant wilbur said this should be attached to the file that lieutenant lavasa had did i read that part right yes okay did you get a file from lieutenant lavasa i can't remember if she gave it to me directly or if sergeant wilbur did but yeah i got a report with a letter that was allegedly wrote by the victim okay did you get any other uh was there anything else in that uh file and is this a computer file or something else it was printed Cody reports i can't remember if i printed out the additional Cody reports or if they were in that when you say coded reports are these in, uh, incident report forms or something else yeah the the police report okay so that would have been the one on 1027 for example right i i mean i'm not sure on what dates but yeah there was additional uh Incident reports created for this. Right. For, by, for example, Sergeant Halverson, right? Yes. Okay. So we're clear that you had the entirety of Lieutenant Lavasser's uh, and the jail investigation and reports when you began your investigation on 11 29 of 22, right? Like I said before, I don't recall if it was all there, if I had to print, I think I might have printed out the other reports. Okay, what, did, what does that mean to, to print out the other reports? So there was however many reports documented in our Cody records management system. If there was four or five other ones, like I said, I can't remember if I printed those out to have for my file or if they were accompanied with this report and yeah, the, the letter. 
Okay, so those and those uh, these files were centrally available at some point. Is that right? They were central centrally available. Is that what you said? Right. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you know if the chief deputy had access to these reports? I mean, anybody that has access to Cody would have had access to those reports, correct? Okay, I got it. Cody is like a noun. Of... That's that's the name of the records management system. I understand. Okay. So it's 118. So there's a sentencing in 12 minutes that. I understand. I appreciate that. Okay. And you want to go uh, or you No, want... I'd rather just push. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you appearing as a witness on the sentencing or is this for edification? I'm not a witness at the time. No, the, so the case is concluded just the sentencing. I got it. But I spent a lot of time on the case. I understand, and I'll hate to deprive you, but I get it. I appreciate your presence here. So during this investigation, did you consult with anybody uh, higher level than yourself? In rank? What are you asking? Yeah, in rank. I mean, I... I can't remember if I had told, um, I mean, I was asked like what the, by Lieutenant Lavasser a few times, if how, how far I was along with the case. And I think I told her that I would finish uh, when I was done viewing the video footage, I'd come talk to um, um, the suspect. Okay. I want to point your attention to page 25. Can you go there, please? And at the bottom, there's going to be a page that says 23. And at the top, it'll say Ashton County Incident Report Form. Yeah, I'm on the page. Great. And then it says end of interview with Carl. Then there's a line. And then it says attempts to speak with Jordan Herbert. Information uh, passed to Jail Lieutenant and Chief Deputy. You see that? Yes. OK. Is this? set paragraph there is this describing your um communications with the chief deputy and lieutenant lavasser about uh potential rule violations at the jail this was for after talking with some of the other inmates that the victim might still be being bullied in the cell block okay and so this is you told chief the chief deputy at that time that uh, there still might be bullying going on. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so he told you to tell Lavasa to take care of it or what? I believe that's what it says. Yes. Okay. Do you recall that or no? Yes. Okay. Now, is that the end of your activities on this report? Because it says nothing further. What does that mean? That's just for that narrative entry that I didn't have anything else to add for that. Okay. And when you're talking about, I guess I want to be clear, because I've been saying are these work rule violations at the jail, but maybe I was misspoke there. Are these, are these rules that the inmates were supposed to be following or the as correctional officers were supposed to be following or possibly both? I'd say possibly both. Okay. Do you know one way or the other? Was that ever identified? I said I asked for clarification from, from Kim Lavasser about rules for the uh, jailers. Or, I mean, sorry, for the inmates. For the inmates that they're going in each other's cells and then having stuff hanging over the cells. Okay, and that's like um, sheets on the doors or what are we talking about? Yeah, Okay. or uniforms over the ends of the bed. Okay.
Now, based on your investigation of the potential criminal activity, did you discover that uh, any additional work rule violations? And I just want to be clear because I understood you to get uh, that Lieutenant Lavasser had informed you of some work rule violations, but now I'm asking you if you had uncovered any potential work rule violations on your own. Other than the ones, like I said, the, that didn't appear that they were being enforced, it, um, it was a daily occurrence for inmates to go in other inmate cells or inmates to um, um, hang up sheets or uniforms to block the view into the cells. Okay. And let the the video recording that you reviewed, did you uh, compile that vi that recordings in any way? I guess I don't understand the question. Sure. Um, if you're telling me that it took 30 days and there were some 45 days worth of video to go through, how would it be possible for, for example, Mr. Grady to have seen portions of this video? How would it have been possible for him to see the video? Right. It was uh, downloaded. Okay, was the entire 45 days worth downloaded or something else? Yes. Okay, and that entire 45 days, was that made available to Mr. Zucky? I believe so, yeah. Okay. And that's, the, but at no time did you ever say, uh, make a greatest hits or some compile the video uh, information in such a way that there was a shorter and more distilled video. I didn't edit the video. I said, I as stated previously, I described each day, like I said, I would, I would watch, I would fast, like slowly fast forward until I would observe that the, the two inmates, the alleged, you know, suspect and victim were in the cell together or something like that. So I didn't watch every second of every day, second no, for second. I can only imagine that must have been tedious. Can uh, the so other than writing this several pages of uh, notes for each day of the events, did uh, did you do anything else to um, convey what you had seen on that uh, on those videos? Not that I recall. Okay. Like you didn't say, hey, uh, you know, sheriff, come look at this and see what's going on in the jail or something like that. I don't recall doing that, no. Great. I appreciate it. So uh, other than this 50-page document in front of you, did you convey any other information to uh, Mr. Zupke about this investigation at any time? I mean, I think he might have asked uh, how far along I was or whatever. And I just said that you know, I'm still watching video, the like same conversations that I had with Kim Lavasser. Okay. And did he ever tell you that Kim Lavasser uh, did not inform him? Her of the him, this is Mr. Zupke. Did Mr. Zupke ever tell you that Kim Lavasser did not tell him about the sexual assault? I don't know. Okay, is that because you don't remember or something else? Can you re uh, restate the question, please? Absolutely. We're, uh, Mr. Zupke, okay, so I don't care if he's the sheriff or under sheriff. Did you ever? Um, communicate anything about this investigation to him other than the one time you just described or this 50 page document here? Not that I recall off the top of my head. Okay. Now, as investigator, did you make any uh, recommendations on the disposition of uh, this uh, allegations against uh, sexual assault allegations? Yes, I did. What was your uh, recommendation? I'd referred charges to the district attorney's office for first degree sexual assault. 
Okay. Um, and did you ide ever identify any rule violations? Did I identify rule violations? Right. I mean, other like I said, other than I've stated previously about um, the correctional officers allowing inmates in, in each other's cells and uh, hanging stuff up, no. Okay. And is that contained, is that information contained anywhere in this report? No, this was, um, like I said, this investigation was for the sexual assault allegations. Okay, so you didn't write in this report anywhere that uh, there was issues with inmates hanging up sheets in the uh, in the jail at all? No. How about being in so. each other's rooms? Was that in here? I mean, it's documented when inmates are in each other's cells and stuff and there's stuff hanging up yes but, but that's but you didn't document it. okay yes i did where i mean let's take a little short leash on this because the report speaks for itself I it know sure does so i get that but you believe that's in here I'll, i can i'll take that answer Yes, I believe it's like I said, if, if they were the suspect or victim were in a cell together and I observed it on the video footage, it's documented in this report. Okay, but it's not in a in summary form anywhere. It's a day by day summary. Okay, I got it. So at any time, did you have a conversation with Mr. Zupke regarding any uh, potential work rule violations? Uh, on be, uh, committed allegedly by Kim Lavasa. No. How about Kyle Kadat? Did Kyle Kadat have conversations, or did I observe did Kyle? Did you have Kadat? conversations with Kyle Kadat about uh, any potential work rule violations alleged to have been committed by Kim Lavasa? Not that I recall. Okay. Uh, at any time prior to Kim Lavaza being removed as jail administrator, did you know she was going to be removed as jail administrator? No, the only thing I was informed of before I had left for um, annual training for the guards is there was a potential that um, of an uh, was it personal or personnel investigation and that Kyle could uh, potentially be filling in the, um, in the jail. Okay. Who told you about that? Uh, the sheriff. Is that Mr. Zuffy or something else? Yes. Okay. So that would have happened after January 3rd, right? So I think it was probably a day or two before I left for guards. Okay, so possibly the 15th. When, when, when did you leave for guards? January 17th. Okay, thank you. All right, so my guess was the 15th of January, so we go up to the 16th of January. He just said he had left for guards on the 17th, so a couple of days before. So, yes, yeah, somewhere around the 15th. Okay. And I, I just want to clarify somewhere around the 16th to the 17th. You understood what uh, about a potential investigation against Ms. Lavassa? I said I understood that there was a potential that she was being investigated. That's what was relayed to me, and that um, uh, Kyle Kadat might be be filling in in the jail. Okay, and Mr. Zupke told you that. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And how? How long after, or I guess, what's the duration between when you finished the report and when he told you that? Um, I said, I don't know when, whenever the report was sent to the DA's office, must have been around the time it was printed, I imagine January 12th. And then, so okay. January 12th and, and to the 17th, five days. I understand. Now I, I, I appreciate that. And I, the other, thing that I'm not clear on was did Mr. Zubke communicate to you that there actually was an investigation into Kim Lavasser that there could possibly be or maybe something else? 
like I said, I was I was under the impression that there could be an investigation, and I was okay. leaving for two weeks, so they didn't want me to be blindsided if I came back and Kyle was no longer in my office for the time being. I got it, but that's exactly what happened, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, you never took part in any investigation into uh, Ms. Lavasser's uh, allegations against Ms. Lavasser, is that right? No. Okay. And in fact, it was known that uh, Mr. Kadat could possibly be uh, replacing Ms. Lavasser prior to any actual investigation taking place, right? I believe so. Okay. Have you at any time seen the, uh, an investigation or any documents that would support an investigation into Kim Lavasser actually took place? I was not a part of any of that, no. Okay, would you have access to that in the normal course of business? I doubt it. Okay. And one to be clear, nobody ever asked you to investigate any work rule violations at any time. No, I was there to investigate the sexual assault. Okay. And the statements that Miss Lavasser gave to you were in conjunction with that sexual assault uh, allegations, right? Yes. Not in conjunction with any potential investigation towards her, right? Yes. Okay. Just one second, please. So um, prior to you starting this investigation, did Ms. Lavasser ever approach you to conducting the investigation? Conduct this investigation? Right. I, I don't recall if she did or not. Okay, and how about during the investigation? During my investigation, did she approach me, you said? About doing the investigation? No, I guess I see that, that's, that's fair <laughs> enough. No, I get that. Friday afternoon. <laughs> ah, can I point you to this last, uh, not last, yeah, last page, the ultimate page even. Oh, and the penultimate one. Yes. Got it in. What penultimate is second to last. Second to ultimate last. Ultimate is last. All right. Second to last. Of the report right of the 50 page report yep uh, all right so this says digital evidence property form you see that yes video file video file video file video file is that right does this show are these all of the video files in the custody and control of uh the sheriff's department regarding this assault this is all the ones that I had uh, downloaded. Okay. And does that mean, I mean, did you, is this all the ones that you viewed as well? Yes. And this is also a, uh, another page after as well. Right. I see that. Right. So it's two pages, 49 and 50 of exhibit 14. Yes. Okay. I got it there. I appreciate that. And then. So there, when there, there wouldn't be any other videos than uh, these videos that are described on these two pages. Is that fair to say? What's described in the report is yes, is those videos. Okay. Well, cause I, and I'm part of what I'm trying to understand is uh, how, for example, the county administrator would have been able to view these videos. Can you speak to that after this is logged the digital evidence property form does, uh, would, for example, the sheriff have access to these videos? Yes. Okay. But not necessarily the county administrator. Is that fair? I don't know what he has access to. 
I understand. Okay. Did you speak with the county administrator any time regarding this investigation? I don't believe so. Is it possible? It's possible. I don't recall ever having a conversation with him about it, though. Have you ever had a direct conversation with him at the end of 2022? I mean, I've seen him at the court house and said hi and stuff, but I don't believe anything about this report. I got it. Okay. Then uh, just finally, are you aware of any uh, staffing issues at the jail while Ms. Lavasser was the uh, jail lieutenant? I really had no direct uh, knowledge, I guess, or influence of what was going on in the jail. So no, and other than maybe them being a little bit short staffed possibly. Okay. Is part of your job to do background checks for uh, the department? Yes. Okay. And in that capacity, did you ever learn if there was a staffing shortage at the jail? I mean, we all have, there's openings, I guess. I don't know what you're classifying as a, if an opening's a staffing shortage, then yes. Great. All right. Just one second here. I mean, hopefully we're, we're, we're done here. All right. I'm sure my learned colleague will have a few questions for you. All right, Zach, in conducting this investigation, when was, in, based upon your review of everything, when was uh, jail staff first advised of a potential sexual assault issue between these two inmates? And if it need to re refresh your recollection on date, I believe it'd be on the 31st page. Of... Uh of the exhibit 14 just following the handwritten letter looks like september 27th 2022 and in your review of uh all of the video in this incident you call approximately when these two inmates were separated from the cell blocks? October 16th, I believe. So between September 27th and October 16th of 2022, did you witness any, uh, I guess, were there any incidents where you witnessed these two inmates in a cell together? Yes, they were in the cell almost every day, if not multiple times a day. And were there any incidents between September 27th and October 18th where these inmates were in a cell together while they hung stuff up to block the view? If it's documented in my report as such, then yes. Okay. So your, your report would indicate that? Yes. And based upon your review of those uh, records, did any instance, instances of what, in your opinion, were sexual assaults occur between these two inmates between September 27th and October 16th? If you recall. I, I think there was a, one instance where I said there was a, a sheet hung up and it looked like some, something uh, physical going on in the cell. I don't remember what day it was. When you typed up these summaries of the videos in the daily summaries on the videos, did you type those on a word processor or some other document or do they go directly into Cody on your incident report form? I think I had it all in word at first. So it does a better spell check than uh, Cody does. So at some point, these summaries were in a Word document separate from this incident report. Correct. Okay. Do you recall if you showed that summary of these summaries to anyone? At what time? Uh, at any time prior, prior to the final report being finalized. I don't believe so. Okay.
You stated at some point you spoke with Mick Brennan about this investigation. Yes. Can you describe what that conversation was about? He would just, you know, pop his head in in the mornings and ask, hey, how's it going today? What do you guys got going on or what, what you working on? And I just said that I'm spending most of the next few weeks or whatever my time uh, watching footage for the alleged um, sexual assault in the jail. Mm -hmm. And did he respond in any way to that? Do you recall? I don't, I think he said okay and walked away if I recall correctly. In reviewing the footage of this incident in your investigation, did you see any uh, times where jail staff were either present or witnessing these actual, call them the, the violations, these incidents where, just to clarify, I can rephrase that. <laughs> in this question, I'll refer to violations as either items hanging on the beds or in the windows or else two inmates being in the cell together that they should not have been. Did I observe that? During, that's just what I'm using as a definition. Okay. During your review of the video, did you observe any jail staff either being present while those violations occurred or uh, present at the video monitor screen while those violations occurred? Yeah, I think most of the time there's always somebody in the, they have to call it the control pod. So based on your review of these videos and the knowledge of these incidents, someone in the jail had seen them, had seen these violations? I would imagine that, yeah, they knew that people were in the cells together. I moved to strike. That's uh, speculation. So noted. Next question. Uh, I'm sorry, just for the record, I didn't hear fully your response, Mr. Cross. I said so noted. Next question. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Um, before we go on, uh, just in terms of Mr. Grady and anything else, I think the only two questions that we have right now, uh, you know, put everything on the table is, I understood there was a reference to a summary. I'd like to, to see if we could figure out what summary. I also understood that he identified watching a video. I'd like to understand what those videos are. Um, I, I can move on from that, but I'd like that to at least be clear. Um, those are, I think, the, the main relevant questions that we still have unanswered from that witness. And if, um, if I may, can I, Ben, can I sure. respond on those issues? Absolutely. That okay. make, yeah. So so my understanding of the, the summaries were these daily video summaries that Zach had included in these, these times. Zach even referred to them as summaries. Uh, that was my understanding of the summary that Administrator Grady was referring to. And, and if that's something else, then that's something else, but that was my understanding. Uh, also, I, I don't specifically recall him testifying that he watched the video, but rather he indicated that the video showed these items. Uh, and, and his, I, I don't believe that Dan Grady specifically watched the videos. He got that information from his communications with other staff members. I think he also testified that he didn't review this report. Yes. So if the summary is in the report, then how did he review it? I think, well, yeah. And I guess my understanding on that is he, he looked at the first pages in the 50 page document and he didn't review the whole document, but you can ask him if he saw so Detective we, Pierce's. So we do have report. a few more questions for Mr. Grady. Um, do you want to send him a message and see if we can get 10, 15 minutes and before we do all that, do we have any more questions for the detective? We do, we do, but that's why for seemliness, I, yes, thank you, yeah. I do, so, but I, you know. So do you want to message Mr. Grady, tell him, we do have a few questions and follow up and then uh, go ahead, Mr. Hitchcock Ross uh, with additional questions you might I appreciate have. that. Uh, sir, Mr. Witness, are you ready? Yes. Great, thank you. 
I'm sorry. What, I don't mean to disrespect you. What's your last name again? Pierce. Pierce. It's been a long day. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, I The thing I want to be clear on is the... Do you have certain knowledge whether the person who's in the control room is able to watch the video for the, uh, their entire time while they're in the control room? I, like I said, I've never, I'm not, I've never sat in as a correctional officer, so I don't know what they, uh, what they all can see or do in the control room. Okay, and as part of your investigation, the assault allegations and what they could or could not see, uh, did you look into that in any way? I was informed that there was, even by the suspect, that there was dead spots in the cells. I believe you referred to those blind spots or possibly or blind spot. spots. Right? Yeah, okay. And uh, so based on that knowledge and understanding, there could be a legal or illicit activity that happens in the cells without the knowledge of the person in the control room, right? I would say so, yes. Okay. Now... Um, based on your review of the video, I understand that you stated that there were sheets on the video on the beds at some certain part where there could have been some um, illicit activity or possibly illegal activity taking place, right? Correct. Do you know about how long those sheets were up? I had probably less than 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, let me just check my notes here. So the one reference I see in here to sheets is uh, saying a lot of nights, a certain individual would make another certain individual put up a sheet in front of his bed so he could pull me down to kiss me on the lips. Do you believe that there's any other reference to sheets or should I be looking for another word? What? What are you looking for? I'm doing a search of this document entitled Full Investigation for any reference in here to a uh, sheet or some other object uh, blocking the bed. So Save far, me. I've done a, a search for sheets and I see one reference to that. Is there another word I should be looking for, for Wait. to indicate some object blocking a bed? Uniform. Uniform, thank you. I do recall that. Okay. Now I understand. So I see here on page 17, uh, um, a significant amount of this, two references to the word uniform at the end of the bed to block the view and close the door in your summaries. I see that, okay. So other than that one page, and I just want to identify well, that. Well, I also, I also see uh, on 924 last, sentence it says tutor sorry person uh, then hangs up jumpsuit and walks away okay good if you sir so you I, can i don't mean to interrupt you you finished it, and this is john again I, I i understand where you're going with that and i i was kind of doing the same thing i appreciate it okay so uh and i always like to be on the same page but i just want to be clear uh the word sheet uh is not used in reference to the particular sexual assault uh, in these summaries, right? It is hard to hear you on the last end. I'm sorry. And it, it could have been more clear. But when I see uniform, I see the word uh, apparently jumpsuit. Tudor hangs his jumpsuit and walks away. I do see that. But I don't see the word sheet in related to uh, as a covering to obstruct view for a potential sexual assault. Is, is that your understanding as well? Yes. I mean, they said there was times that, so I merely documented when 
the two were in the cells together. I didn't document everybody's activity throughout the uh, cell block that day. I perfectly understand. And with that in mind, it wouldn't be possible for um, the county administrator or the sheriff to have gotten the impression that there were sheets being hung up uh, blocking view based on these summaries, right? Well, hold on. The other, might I ask a few questions? So when you did your review of the video, did you note exactly what was being hung up every time or are there times when you did not put it in there? I would, I believe I would put it in there. Like I said, Mr. The, the victim's words were that sheets were hung up. Okay. I would document if it was a blanket, maybe it says did, blanket or. Did you ever observe on the videos when it was actually a sheet? versus all these other jumpsuits, uniforms. I think there's a towel in here. Blanket. Maybe blanket, what's it? Mm -hmm. okay. And I, following up on Attorney Hitchcock Cross's question, he's wanting to know, well, if it's not in here, then where did the administrator get it from, if you know? Like I said, there was- I hardly said it better myself. statements uh, from other inmates in the block as well in their statements. Um, I can say his name, Mr. Ryan's statements stating that he had never been to a jail where they were allowed to hang sheets or blankets or go in other people's cells. That's in this report as well. Okay. Great. Uh, just let me confer one second. Hey, sir, I hope you have a great time at your sentencing. Thank you. It's not his sentence. He's not going to prison. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. But I, I mean, it's the culmination of your work. So I, uh, you know, anything else? Possession of it, a, however, it works. I had a couple of follow up questions. Right, quickly. Uh, is, it, is it possible that you identified a blanket as, or a sheet as a blanket in your report? Yes. And in conducting your interviews with the inmates for this investigation, did any any inmates comment on the control and operations of the jail staff? Yes. And what were some comments that you had heard about the control and operations of the jail? Uh, one of the inmates that I interviewed said that the inmates run the jail. And what did he mean by that? What did he explain to you to mean by that? Basically, people could do what they wanted. They could hang blanket sheets, whatever you want to call them, or go in anybody's cells for extended periods of time, anytime you want. Thank you, that's all. But that's not noted in this document, is it? It doesn't say anywhere that the inmates run the jail, right? I believe in Mr. Ryan's statement. It says that somewhere. Great. Can we point to it? If I may just show here, it is. I'm on page 11, or 24, I mean. PDF page 24, 25. Yeah, no, I see that. Oh, 
Okay. And so this is, I just want to be clear here that uh, the statements, because you, you've you got a statement here from Carl Ryan, but you also watched 45 days worth of video, right? Yes. Okay. And did you see the, what the statements that Carl, did you believe Carl Ryan's statements to be accurate uh, based on your view of video? His statement being? For example, that the uh, blankets were up 90% of the time. I wouldn't say no, that it was 90%, but I definitely did see blankets up. Yes. Oh, okay. Perfect. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Anything else for you? No. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Zach. Did you send a message to Mr. Green? Yeah. Having her back. Okay. Well, um, you need a break or you want to plow forward? I'm assuming Ms. Lavasser's next. Yeah, let's mm, five minutes, but let's do it. Fair enough. Okay. Five minutes. See you soon. Time for me to have another piece of pizza. <laughs>